Uh, we'll be in Psalm 103 tonight. While you're turning there, I just want to thank God uh, that he just allows me to be a part of anything Amen. that he has going on. we are uh, got to see a lot of, of great things going on, a lot of baptisms and people getting saved, and a lot of growth in our youth and, and the young people in our bus ministry. And uh, it's exciting when you got to get to see, start to see God move, Brother Steve. We get to see those lives changed. Those lives, made a difference made in those lives. And I thank God and I thank all of you all because that allows us to be a part of that ministry. And it's exciting. And we're getting to see some of their parents even getting involved in church and wanting to learn more about God and to, to be on fire for God. But, uh, and I just want to thank God that he gives me that privilege and that opportunity. I don't want to ever fail to thank him for what he allows me to do. But if you have your Bibles and you're in Psalm 103, we'll uh, begin reading verse 1. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle's. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. And he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious and slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. God, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for this opportunity, God. We thank you for everyone that's here. Pray that you'll give us hearts and minds prepared to hear your word tonight. God, just touch these lips of clay and this tongue, God, and let them say what you want them to. Nothing more, nothing less, God. And if there's anyone here that does not know Christ as their Savior, that they'll uh, get that settled tonight, God, before it's eternally too late. And we just thank you for everything you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you in here are forgetful? Man, I am forgetful. I'm telling you what, if it wasn't for an iPhone and a calendar and a, a very loving and supporting wife, I would forget everything. If God didn't give me a brain that told me to breathe, I probably nowadays would forget to breathe sometimes. It's just the way I am anymore. I don't know what it is. My wife tells me it's my age, but that, that, that may be it. But I said, man, what am I going to be in 10 more years? But anyways, we're all forgetful and we live and we live such busy lives and such fast-paced lives and we're involved with so much and work takes from us and, and, and it's not a bad thing, but family takes from us and everything takes from us that we just have so much going that we get forgetful. But there's some things that we never want to forget. There's some things in life that we must not forget. And we look back through the Bible and, and through the Old Testament and you know, with the Israelites as they would grow near God, they would grow close to God and they would be thinking about God and they would be fixated on God and then they would begin to forget. They would begin to be drawn away. They would begin to, and their spiritual lives would just plummet, plummet to the bottom and all through the Bible. And we've seen that through the days ago uh, and days past and we've had great revivals, the Welsh revivals and the great awakenings and all the things that have happened through the years. I mean, it seems like we hit a peak and we get on fire and then the next thing you know, we fall down. We begin to forget the things of God. We forget to forget, we begin to forget the good things of God. We begin to forget all that He does for us and who He is. There's some things, though, that we cannot forget. We must remember the greatness of God, the greatness of God. We must remember who God is. Here in this passage, we see David writing, and he, he, he gives us a glimpse of who God is. And I'm afraid that many times in our nation today, many have forgotten God. And in our, in our churches even, many have forgotten God. But even further, many Christians and individuals, we've forgotten God. Now, we've not completely forgotten who, he, who, who God is. We know there's a God, but we have forgotten about all the good things of God and all the things of God and that he is holy and that he is just and he is righteous and he's immutable, all those things, and he's all-powerful and he's all-knowing. We've forgotten that. We've lost sight of that. 
We, we, we want to be renewed and we're praying for revival and we want to see revival happen in our churches and we want to see revival happen in our homes and I hope you're praying that. And, and like we, uh, Brother uh, Zach preached last night, brought the message about the revival there. We want revival. We want to be renewed. We want to be on fire for God. That's where I want to be. I may fail him. I may not do everything right all the time. But Brother Travis, I want to be on fire for God. I don't want to forget who God is in my life. And I don't want to forget to tell my child who God is and what the great things that he's done in my life and all the things that he's done for me. And I don't want to forget that we, uh, to tell these bus kids and all the folks around us that there's something better in this world and that there's something great, and that is God. And we don't want to ever forget that, church. But we live in a time when we have forgotten God. We have forgotten who God is. Have you stopped lately to really think about who God is? Who he is. He's the creator of everything. He holds this universe in his hand. He created each and every one of you for a reason and for a purpose. You're not here by accident. You're not here by mistake. He is the creator God. He's all powerful. But yet, all of that, he knows the number of the hairs that are on your head. He cares that much for you. We don't want to forget who God is. And we don't want to forget to tell those coming behind us. But also, we must never forget his greatness. We must never forget what God does. All the things listed here that God does, we see in verse uh, 3, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. If he does nothing else for me, that's the best thing that he ever could have done for me, brother. All my sins have been washed away. They are forgiven. As we read later on in this passage, we see that they're as far as the east is from the west. My sins are no longer remembered. They're forgotten. They're gone. That's what God does. We got to remember who he is and what he does. He, he, he cleanses us. He forgiveth all our iniquity and healeth thy diseases. I know there's people in here that can raise their hand and say, God's touched me. I, ha I had something going on that doctors and nobody else knew what, what was going on. Nobody else knew how to fix it, but God has touched me. We want to remember that tonight. We don't want to ever forget that. Looking back over the year, my wife is one sitting there. Now, God heals some in some ways and some in other ways. But when you hear the word cancer, it scares you to death. Because the first thing you think is a death sentence. But she's sitting over there right now and just had an appointment a little while ago and she's still cancer free. Amen. God takes care of us. I don't want to ever forget what God does for me. I don't want to forget all of his handiwork. What God does. He heals our diseases. He redeemeth thy life from destruction. There's a good way. He can put you on that good way. He can lead you in the way of righteousness. He can take care of you. He can, he can fulfill your needs. And he has satisfied the mouth of good things so that they, thy youth is renewed like the eagles. We're praying for revival. We're praying for renewal. We're praying for restoration. We're praying for God to do great and mighty things. I want to leave you with this thought. Who is God to you tonight? Make him the leader of your home. Make him the leader of your life. Make him the king of kings in your home. And make him the king of kings in your family. Make him the king of kings in your heart. Don't forget who God is.